Hey everybody, welcome back to the Chasing Independence podcast. I'm your host, Chase Selmeyer, and today we are going to jump into our very first mini-sode. And what is a mini-sode, you may ask? Well, it's a 20 to 30 minute short interview. Where we'll be still catching up with people in the action sports realm, but these individuals are more professional at certain tasks, whether it be media buying, online marketing, branding, e-commerce sales, really cool topics. And the idea is to give you actionable items that you can put the place in your business like right now. So check this first one out. I've got Scott Kramer from Common Thread Collective out of New York City. Scott really knows the ins and outs of e-commerce selling and gives some pretty cool tips and tricks. All right, so let's get this one started, this first mini-sode with today's guest. Scott, what's going on, my man? What's happening, Chase? Always great to chat with you. Um, hope things are well for you guys down in Florida. I know we're, we're both holding it down on the East Coast. Yeah, man, you're up in New York. You got a lot worse than me, I feel like. What's, what's it been like? Yeah, it's, I mean, this is what, a month in probably or so? I haven't really left the apartment too much, which I'm sure you're well aware. We all go stir-crazy being old adrenaline action sport junkies, but we're, we're making the most of it. Totally. Well, let's kind of talk about that a little bit. I know I've known you through action sports, through skiing and surfing, and all this crazy stuff. What are your kind of core sports and how'd you grow up in the action sports? Yeah, I think, I mean, we originally, I think, met down at a uh, surf expo years ago. Um, so I was big into rock climbing, mountaineering all the way back into like elementary school, middle school, spent a lot of time in Alaska, Bolivia, all over the world, big into kind of that, just like wanted to climb world's tallest peaks, everything like that. And then growing up in New York City, September 11th happened. Couldn't really travel as far. So kind of my like globe trotting kind of young age uh, kind of was put on hold and I got bigger into skiing. Went to school in Vermont, uh, started competing in freestyle. Uh, I was very late to the game, but it was gung ho to just like learn it all, try it all. Uh, and that took me to Colorado. And then, yeah, I just got versed in you name it, anything, just trying to push the, the limits, just having fun, meeting a bunch of great people, networking, and that brought me full circle. I, uh, yeah, I mean, I started with Level 1 Productions, I mean, was that back in 2010? I didn't even know I was working in e-com for them, actually, and that was where I got my feet wet in the e-com world, just helping them run the online shop, selling DVDs, t-shirts, hats, sweatshirts, you name it, everything we were selling out there. Uh, we were just people wanted it, anything with the level one brand on it. And I was running the entire e comp shop. I just didn't even know that was a thing. That was, yeah, like I'm saying 2010. That's wild. That's crazy. I've been in e comp 10 years without even knowing it. Didn't even know it. Yeah. Yeah. No, Scott, we've done some crazy things together. I think I, I'm looking forward to our next ski trip. Uh, I, I do remember our times at surf expo. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Some good times there. So, all right, man. Well, tell us a little bit about what you're doing today. Um, you're in New York city, you're running a branch of a really cool company and what do they do? Yeah, so Common Thread Collective, uh, like I was saying, I was in Colorado for a bit, um, was doing sales and a bunch of things, and then was trying to get back into digital marketing, was doing a lot of stuff on the side, still working in the ski industry, and I was like, let me look for something different, and I took a move out to California, I was like, you know what, let's go live on the beach, not a great surfer, let me see what I can do, and I uh, started with a great company, Common Thread Collective, we're a digital growth agency helping e-com brands scale anywhere from zero to 30 million a year in e-com revenue. Uh, just finding ways we can help them on their growth trajectory. Early days, we we're just doing simply Facebook paid advertising is an early day of it. So you can really, the, the arbitrage of uh, paid advertising, we were able to scale brands quickly with minimal kind of styling. And then we realized slowly that we really needed to step up our creative game. And then that became a big kind of movement. And then it's kind of uh, metamorphosized from that of like, okay, how do we really help scale these brands outside of just their paid advertising? Creative is important. What is it to just look at their full e-com stack? Like how do we actually help acquire customers at scale, but grow the business? So that's kind of been the forefront. And we've been fortunate enough to work with a bunch of amazing companies. And uh, that's what led me to open our New York City office uh, back in September. Um, so we've been here uh, seven, eight months now, obviously through the shutdown, we're all kind of working remote, but uh, yeah, our California office is going strong. We got the New York one now as well. And it's just been a, been exciting times obviously d to c is kind of booming in a weird way with the pandemic right now um so yeah it's every day is something new that's wild yeah i remember when you started moving out to new york city to do the open that office and just kind of seeing the growth of the company uh i'm really excited to kind of talk about some things that you're seeing from an e-commerce brand standpoint and online sales right now how has the uh, clearly the shutdown of brick and mortar 
uh, affected you guys because you know, clearly everything's moved online. So you have people opening up stores way quicker. Your current customers also need to be taken care of. So kind of what are you guys seeing right now in the space? Yeah, it's, it's totally crazy. I mean, there's obviously some brands that are doing well, some are struggling. You can think about the whole idea of essential and non-essential products. And so if you can kind of fit into that mold, like some of them, it's, it's a hard thing to sell right now. It's like people aren't going to buy a product that they can't go out and use every day. So those guys need to get really creative. So I think it's everyone either needs to kind of figure out a new angle to help them kind of survive this. The other brands that are selling products that are like the food, the meal deliveries, stuff like that, it's a no-brainer. People really want it. So those guys are scaling really easily. Um, and then the, the at-home gym products like your Pelotons, the mirrors, the tonals, that's, again, simple stuff. That's like you could just kind of put some basic kind of advertising out there. People are like, yeah, I need this. I'm stuck at home. I want to work out. Um, so that's what I think is interesting. The other brands that are getting more creative, the companies that are, you're selling maybe apparel, you're selling um, something that's fitness clothing. So it's like, okay, that kind of makes sense. But it's like someone selling dress clothes or like dress shoes. Like, okay, how do I need to like spin this to convince people without going full discounting? So that's where it, there's kind of so many different tactics people are trying. So it's like, how do you find what works for your brand? And for your own growth to get through this. Well, right now, I'm sure you guys are seeing a lot of people try and experiment and try things that they've never imagined trying before. Um, have you had clients on your end maybe cut back a lot of spend if they're not in those direct spaces? Are they trying to save their money? And also from a consumer standpoint, are people not as apt to to spend right now as well? Yeah, that, that was the crazy thing. Like definitely like March 16th was where we saw that big just drop off. Everything kind of shut down. People were like, you know what, I'm holding on to my cash. This could be a massive recession. Like what's going on? And then from there, people started, their buying habits started changing. If you think about it, without have people being able to spend money in retail stores, all that, it's like you've got like people sitting at home with this influx of cash. And like I've talked to a lot of people like, yeah, I've got this disposable income. The, the people that are fortunate enough to still be making a living, their work from home. Um, so they're still collecting paycheck, but they're not spending as frivolous as they were. So now they're like, okay, well, maybe I will go out and buy that that shirt I always wanted, or I'm going to buy that bathing suit. It's like, well, it's not summer, but you know what? I've been looking at it for a while. So I think it's people that have been able to build up core followings. Now they can really kind of capture some of that kind of uh, demand that they created over the last six months. And now it's how do you create new demand if you're a brand that didn't have that going? So that's where I'm saying that need to get creative and kind of witty with it to be like, okay, what is it to help acquire people really aggressively now? Because the other side of it, we've been seeing this cost for advertising is going down because the massive, massive brands, the Coca-Colas, the McDonald's, these large kind of like Fortune 500 companies that usually spend billions and billions of dollars in these advertising channels, they've pulled back a lot of their spend. So it makes it a lot easier for the other kind of D2C style brands that are kind of more traditional e-com to really make uh, like leaps and bounds in their growth right now. So if a company is looking at their ad spend budget, and that's kind of some of the things I want to jump into right now, but uh, KPIs that your customers or these e-commerce brands should be looking at right now, is it the total sales, referrals, conversion rate, that ROAS? And if they are finding extra cash or they actually have some, are you saying that it might be a good time to look at ad buying now because the prices are maybe dropping? Yeah, I think if you've got a product that definitely has an angle that can fit and you're seeing some consumer growth, um, a lot of them we've seen um, some really just awesome tactics just kind of helping out the community and everything going on is like giving a charity component. That's really kind of touching a lot of people. If you've got some angle where you can give back to nurses, to your communities, it's a big thing that I think where a lot of brands that really create solid brands is building communities because that's what it's all really about. Like you can have just a product and just trying to sell it out there, but if you're not creating that brand and that community, you're only going to go as far as your kind of advertising spend is going to get you. Do you have anybody right now that's kind of doing that well? Uh, we've got a few. I think uh, Homesick Candles is a great one. Um, I mean, just thinking about candles, people are stuck at home. They want it to smell well. They also have a great kind of component where it's you're trying to talk about uh, these nostalgia periods of these states, these cities, these memories. Um, and then even we've got a Thank You Mom candle with Mother's Day coming up. So that's even thinking about these kind of holidays, we had National Pet Day last week, so we had a lot of pet brands that did really well. Um, so thinking about those, you're you're stuck at home, you're you're isolated to either your husband, wife, kids, and your pets. So it's like, okay, you know, if I want to spoil, I want to spoil them all. A National Pet Day is a great day. So the companies like the Bark Boxes, um, I think that the other big thing of companies that can do really well is where they can really acquire customers. If you've got a consumable product or you know that the lifetime value. So it's like, okay, how do I acquire as many new customers as possible when it's more cost-effective? 
So come later on in the year when maybe it gets expensive Q4. Okay, how do I have all these loyal customers that I've been able to create in a short period of time that now I can reap more benefits through email marketing, SMS, um, different kind of ways that, you know, it cost me a lot to acquire them or it was just effective to acquire them that now I've got a lot of these people that are lifetime customers. Yeah, because right now is about the time anyways, you're going to be recommending clients that they need to be looking at Q4 anyway. So building that customer base, the email list, those lookalike audiences and having the ability to really target them come Q4 because come in the end of Q3 even, trying to get those customers in the funnels gonna be really expensive. You're not gonna have the best impact possible. So no, it's a great, great uh, lead into. So when somebody's looking at their Shopify account right now, they need to be really focusing on maybe building that new customer list um, and keeping the customers they currently have. What other things can people be doing right now to kind of jumpstart their business if they're seeing the drop in sales? It's an interesting one. I mean, I think that's a big part. We always talk to brands about like, what is their their end goal? It's like, are they really strapped for cash? So it's really understanding what is your cash flow situation? If someone has like some of the bigger brands with a lot of VC money or stuff like that, or they got a large backing, or maybe they just have amazing margins, you know what, they could run a little leaner and like, you know what, let's just acquire as much as we can. But others that are like, you know what, like what is that repeat customer window? So you're always looking at the different variables. So I think it's kind of like, what is it that, what, what makes sense in that model for, for you? So it's kind of playing those models in your head. Okay, what can I acquire? How can I be effective? Do I need to put a big PO out and order a lot more inventory? So it's kind of understanding that of how it really affects kind of your, your own business growth and what you can kind of like leverage and how much, how much risk you want to take. Cause that's the big thing is like, it's, it's good right now. We saw a massive spike last week when people got stimulus checks, people's tax refunds were coming in. A lot of brands, there was this kind of big hubbub going on about everyone like, oh my God, accounts are amazing. Everyone scale, scale, scale. And so there's some people that are just like trying to take as much opportunity as they can, but others are like trying to play the long game. So it's kind of like, what can you afford to do and how risky do you want to be? Got it. No, that's awesome. I mean, we, we definitely think when we're thinking forward to, you know, yeah, are we going to have this come back in the economy? Are we going to bounce back from this? How long do we need to be holding cash? Are we, our cash reserves good enough to keep this company afloat for even materials and employees just for the, the short term? And then ad spend is a huge part. I, I remember like back in, 08, 09, everybody's like, you know, when the, the comedy tanks, marketing dollars are kind of flowing out. Like people were just, that's the first thing they pulled. Do you see that kind of trend happening now where people are kind of re, like recognizing the value of, of good marketing that yes, we need to under, tell our customers that we're able to pivot. We're now doing home delivery, like online, we can get to you so much quicker. Yeah. I think the, the traditional marketing is definitely getting pulled back a lot. So that's where like you're saying 08, 09, is like, okay, companies are struggling first thing everyone cut their marketing budget. So that was when me and you we were graduating college and marketing degrees like, oh yes, like I'm gonna go. Yeah, I can't wait. <laughs> can't get a job anywhere. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna move to Colorado and pursue skiing. And that was, was my idea back then. But uh, yeah, I think now it's like similar things are happening, but people are like, what is the marketing channels that are still most effective? So they're they're leaning down their marketing teams and being like, okay, how do I focus just in this one that I can attach actual dollars to? So that's where, a lot of these large the legacy brands that are reliant on their retail, their brick and mortar, they're like, okay, how do I learn this e-com game and put a lot of marketing dollars to that? Yeah. So it's kind of a really good time also to go back through and, and, and trim the fat, as they say, or, or look at accounts that aren't, aren't are performing. Uh, you can go through your, your ads on Facebook and, and make, and see which ones aren't doing great. Might as well pull them. If you have old products or, you know, any of that kind of stuff, definitely kind of look at an area where you can save some money. So, wow, that's really cool. Yeah, that's that's a big thing. A lot of these brands is like maybe you're selling ten different types of products, but only one or two of them really make sense right now. So it's like, okay, let me stop trying to acquire people that way and just focus on this one that is maybe that more essential product or something. So that's where I've seen a lot of brands that are like trying to figure out, okay, what is that kind of new like entryway into my brand that I can really push on instead of me having these like six, seven different funnels I'm working on. Let me focus on the only ones that are making me money right now and like how do I be as efficient there. I mean, you dropped a lot of knowledge there. Some really good tips. Uh, any last word before we drop out of here and uh, let people know where they can find you and more about Common Thread? Sure. Yeah. I mean, I think the big thing is um, we all just need to get creative. Everyone's kind of looking at what is someone else doing, but it's like, what can I do that's different and unique right now? People are saying Mother's Day, Father's Day sales. That's great. But it's like, that's also when it gets really competitive. So how do I create these new moments, do something different that's out of the box? Um, that's going to be the big thing that's going to separate you hard from them because if you're just copying that guy to the left and to the right of you you're only gonna do as well as them if you really want to excel you gotta go past them um 
Yeah, and Common Thread Collective. Uh, you can find us online, commonthreadco.com. Uh, Ski Test Scott is my Instagram handle. You can also follow me, LinkedIn, uh, Scott Kramer. Uh, feel free to hit me up. Uh, always happy to talk nerd out on all this kind of e-com D2C and always happy to hit the slopes and uh, get extreme, get out there. Yeah, man, I love catching up with you on a phone and we definitely have some uh, tracks to shred this next winter. I'll see you in the lake too. It's be good. Yeah. All right, man. We were doing uh, the last few episodes. I did a uh, quarantine four questions real quick with uh, Matt Manzari the other day. But since this is a mini sode, we're doing the quarantine two questions. First place you will go once travel opens back up. Oh man, that's a tough one. I had a lot of. I was supposed to go on a couple of ski trips. I don't think the ski resorts are going to be open by the time this is done. I had a bachelor party and work trip down to Austin. Where do I? Where first place I'm going to go? I mean, you're on the road a lot too. So I... I don't know. I mean, maybe Aspen or maybe I, I really want to get like a good, like get a friend's trip going. I missed out. We wanted to do a big ski trip to Europe this year. It didn't happen. So maybe just getting maybe a little beach adventure. Maybe I'll come down there and visit you actually. Yeah, man. We'll drive the boat in, get the foil out. Yeah, like great. Yeah. One wake surfing in. That's, it's been a while. All right. I like that answer. All right. And uh, going back to hugs and handshakes, or are you going to keep your social distance after this? Hugs and handshakes, man. I, I mean, maybe that's just the adrenaline junkie in, in all of us it's like we're, we're bigger than uh than this so it's like i'm not gonna let it slow me down and like, yeah, i gotta let china win can't, you can't catch it so it's like keep keep the, the vibes alive maybe we're doing hugs and handshakes but with face masks on yeah it'll be all good so hey i do want to touch on this before we go i just thought i was thinking about this earlier and i didn't want to want to let it let it pass by uh, do you think that your kind of experience in adventure sports and action sports helped you when you were going to find a cool company like Common Thread? Like, did it did it make you kind of stand out, and does it help you work with clients and people in these industries that I mean, you kind of you fit in? That, that's a great question. I think it's kind of I mean, everyone kind of looks at their background and what has kind of set them up. I think a lot of people that you see that are really kind of outgoing have really good strong sales backgrounds. So I think it's a combination of. Growing up in New York City, growing up in that competitive mindset, so a lot of people that are big in team sports or action sports, they really have that kind of like that drive and determination to go there, go out there, figure it out and push it and just really like learn. And um, that's where the people I think are, I'm always excited for. So I've hired and trained a lot, a lot of individuals over the years. I think I'm fortunate enough to have a keen eye to see where those people have that kind of hunger and energy in them. And that's what I always look for when, uh, when looking to hire and bring on uh, new people. Yeah, I don't, I don't want to say, I have to say you have to be like involved in sports to be great in business, but I definitely think the kind of qualities in some of these crossovers, you know, it matters. So, all right, Scott, we're going to get out of here. Thanks for the awesome tips, dude. Really appreciate it. Always, man. Great catching up. You Knuckles too. Are. Knuckles out, Keep elbows safe. out. All right, guys, till next time, this is Chase with the Chase Independence Podcast. Hope you got some helpful tips there. Put them to use. You got the time. Until next time, I'll catch you on the flip side. Okay, guys, don't forget if you're a small business or destination and you were affected by the coronavirus, uh, please check us out at kangamarketing.com. We're giving away $15,000 to three different businesses from hotels, restaurants, resorts, destinations, uh, and marketing services. We want to be able to do our best to help them out and get them back to normal as soon as possible. So check that out, kangamarketing.com. You'll see uh, the $15,000 small business giveaway. Uh, but yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed that episode with Scott. Scott uh, in Common Thread Collective, he definitely knows the back end around e-commerce sales and media buying. So if you guys have any questions for him, I'll leave his contact info. Uh, you can reach out to him on Instagram or LinkedIn. I'll put that in the show notes. Uh, you can check out Common Thread Collective. They got some really cool brands they work with from Igloo, 511. Um, they do pup socks. And actually, I got a pair of pup socks from Chris for Christmas uh, from my sister with my dog and my face on them. That was really cool. So, uh, but yeah, check them out. They do a hell of a job. And yeah, if you guys have any other questions or other topics, ideas that we should be talking about, or maybe your small business is going through right now, send them my way. I'll make sure to get them on a topic or at least on the next list for this mini episode. And uh, stay tuned for the next full length episode of Chase Independence. I got some really cool interviews coming up and we'll be launching those every few weeks. So you can learn more about the schedules and upcoming guests at the kangamarketing.com website as well. But uh, I promised myself I'd keep these shows, these mini shows to about 20 minutes. So we are getting to the end of this one. And thank you guys for sticking around. Y'all are rock stars. Really appreciate it. And should I let you go early? 
or should I drag it out? Should I let you go early or should we drag it out? I think we're going to finish this just on time. Guys, this episode is over now.